Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or COPD is a disease condition characterized by airflow limitation that is not fully reversible, and this airflow limitation is usually progressive and associated with an abnormal inflammatory response of the lungs to noxious particles or gases. COPD is a disease with variety of clinical syndromes like emphysema and chronic bronchitis which is associated with airflow limitation and destruction of the lung parenchyma. We will discuss bronchitis and emphysema in details later in this video. Stay focused. COPD usually comes as a package with a number of comorbidities, such as ischemic heart disease, hypertension, diabetes, heart failure and cancer, suggesting that it may be part of a generalized systemic inflammatory process. Let's look into the etiology and epidemiology of COPD. COPD is caused by long-term exposure to toxic particles and gases. In developed countries, cigarette smoking accounts for over 90% of cases, and the rest is by other factors like inhalation of smoke from biomass heating fuels and cooking in poorly ventilated areas. Only 10-20% of smokers develop COPD which suggests that there is an underlying individual susceptibility. Urbanization, air pollution, socioeconomic class and occupation may also play a part in the etiology, but these effects are difficult to separate from the smoking. Both acute and chronic inflammation predominantly caused by neutrophils, CD8 predominant lymphocytes and macrophages, which is triggered by above-mentioned etiological agents, such as smoking results in scarring and fibrosis of the small airways. In addition, there is destruction of the alveolar walls, which results in emphysema. Emphysema can be defined as abnormal and permanent enlargement of air spaces, distal to the terminal bronchioles and classified, according to the distribution of damage into three classes, century assigner emphysema, pan assigner emphysema and irregular emphysema. In century assigner emphysema distension and damage of lung tissue are concentrated around the respiratory bronchioles, while the more distal alveolar ducts and alveoli are well preserved, and this form of emphysema is extremely common. Panasiner emphysema is associated with alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency and less common. Distension and destruction affect the whole asinus, and in severe cases the lung is just a collection of bully. Severe airflow limitation and mismatch can occur due to panasiner emphysema. Finally in irregular emphysema as its name implies, there is scarring and damage that affect the lung parenchyma patchily independent of a sinus structure. Emphysema leads to expiratory airflow limitation and air trapping. The loss of lung elastic recoil in lungs results in an increase in total lung capacity and premature closure of airways limits expiratory flow while the loss of alveoli decreases capacity for gas transfer, leading to ventilation perfusion mismatch. Granulocytes can release elastases and protases, an imbalance between protus and antiprotus activity is a causative factor in the development of emphysema. Mucus gland hypertrophy in the larger airways is thought to be a direct response to persistent irritation, resulting from the inhalation of cigarette smoke. The smoke has an adverse effect on surfactant, favoring overdistension of the lungs. Patients with COPD are more prone to lower respiratory tract infections. Respiratory infections are often the precipitating cause of acute exacerbations of the disease and prompt use of antibiotics and routine vaccinations against influenza and pneumococcus are needed in COPD patients to prevent frequent exacerbations. Productive cough with white or clear sputum, wheeze and breathlessness, are the cardinal features of COPD patients. Hypertension, osteoporosis, depression, weight loss and reduced muscle mass with general weakness and right heart failure, can be seen as systemic effects of COPD. In mild COPD, there may be no signs, or there may be quiet wheeze throughout the chest, but in severe disease, the patient is tachypnoic, with prolonged expiration, accessory muscles of respiration are used, and there may be intercostal indrawing on inspiration, and pursing of the lips on expiration, 
cricosternal distance is reduced, chest expansion is poor, and the lungs are hyperinflated, and there is loss of the normal cardiac and liver dullness. Patients who remain responsive to CO2 are usually breathless and rarely cyanist. Heart failure and edema are rare features except as terminal events. In contrast, patients who become insensitive to CO2 are often edematous and cyanist, but not particularly breathless. Those with hypercapnia may have peripheral vasodilation, a bounding pulse, and a coarse flapping tremor of the outstretched hands. In severe hypercapnia patient become confused and drowsy. Patients in the later stages may develop respiratory failure, pulmonary hypertension and core pulmonale. Diagnosis and treatments of COPD will be discussed in our next video, hope you got a clear idea about COPD. See you next time. Thank you.